What's up guys? It's Talia. It is currently Sunday, January the 14th, and I'm back um, after taking last weekend off, but not by choice. Um, did you guys miss me? I missed you, like, a hell of a lot. Um, what happened last week was I was trying to use a new camera that I had gotten, and it just was not working out. Like, it was only recording like seven minutes of video at a time. And so, that didn't work out. And so, it was already evening time, and so, I wanted to, I was still trying to do the video, so I just went as like, let me just go back to my laptop like I've been doing, and, you know, do it that way. Well, I don't know what it was, but after two takes, like, I went through the whole video twice, and I still didn't like either video. Like, it was, I don't know what it was about anything that I was saying, or just the fact that it was at night. I don't know what was up with it, but I didn't like either take. And so I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to have to do the video later. So... Um, I got uh, quite a few lips to show you, and I'm actually, I promise, I, I have been promising this for weeks, I'm going to go ahead and do my new watches, it's going to, it's a pretty lengthy list, so, um, I probably won't say a lot about each person, um, about each new floss tuber, um, there's a couple of things that I probably will mention something about, but, um, just in the interest of time, um, I probably won't say a lot about any particular person. Um, so, grab your stitching, something to drink, and yeah. So, starting with January the 1st, which was actually the last time you saw me, but I wasn't covering what I was working on that day. So, we'll start there. Um, as many of you, as, I don't know if you remember, Many of you may remember. Um, January 1st was my new year, new start. And since I always try to start something that's new to me, like a specific style or designer, I started the uh, Miss Cherry Blossom by Mirabilia. And I'm doing this, <coughs> sorry. I'm doing this on a dyed linen that I dyed myself. Couldn't replicate it if I tried. Um, and I did spend about a day, maybe a day and a half on this. Didn't get a whole ton of work done on it. Um, uh, managed to get the little, I don't know if you call that a ribbon or whatever that is. It's coming out from her back. And then the one that kind of loops right there, um, at her waist. And this is the start of her dress right here. But it was a lot of fun to work on. I will give it that. It was a lot of fun to work on. Um, oh, and I know I know I already said it in my um, plans video, but Needleminder by Kate at No Name Needleminder. It's just another little lovely artsy lady. Um, I debated on whether or not to put this one or my little opaly opal, pink opal swan needleminder on there, but it's pretty big and pretty heavy. So, I next that idea. Um, I did work on that that day, January 1st. Um, and also the morning of the second, like into early afternoon. But, I wanted to work on something else. So, I pulled out something else. Um, the next thing I pulled out to work on was the Spanish sampler, and I'm finding it now. For you guys that don't remember what the Spanish sampler looks like. This is one of the designs from the um, 101 Best Love Designs by from Cross Stitch and Country Crafts. A wealth of gorgeous patterns in this book, you guys should get it. Um, this is the Spanish sampler. 
and where I'm at is just in this corner right here. So, just to give you a point of reference there. Um, that needs to stay out because um, I have another whip coming up that I need to show you guys from that book as well. So, last time you saw this, I was I had really just done, well, I was still working on that double border. Why does every sampler has a double border? And, ta-da, I got the whole block done. And I am now very familiar with satin stitch. This right here bugs me. And I don't know why it's doing that. Like, I really don't like I don't know why it's doing that. Like the other side, like it's dipping in naturally, but I don't know why that side is, is, is like that. I gotta figure out how to fix that. Um, all that satin stitch. And in case you're wondering, yes, these are satin stitch, um, but it does give instructions that the little tendrils coming out are meant to be backstitched so that that in looking at the picture in the book I can tell that they were backstitched a block at a time so so that's that and I haven't gone and finished this part of the border yet because I'm gonna wait until I um I get ready to continue that border down before I finish that little bit up because I don't want to just pull that piece of thread out just for that um this is a piece of, oh, that's showing up pretty good over here. Um, this is Queen Anne's Lace. It is a 32 count. Hold on, I'll let you know. I don't know. It's, uh, no, it's 28 count. I take that back. It's 28 count Jovelin in Queen Anne's Lace by White Shelf. I didn't realize what it was when I picked it up, and... Just a little flower, you don't mind her. Um, I feel like I also got this from um, No Name You Don't Minders. It's kind of, it, yeah, it's a flower, it's like an artsy flower. This is going to be a square sampler, as you can see, but it's just going to be some extra length on the end. both the boys are sleeping um and then the next thing I worked on um I did work on my chosen one of my chosen um projects that I have selected for this month to focus on and it's going to be another <laughs> the pages are kind of already chosen out. This is the Dutch Sampler. Another one from that same book. Dutch Sampler. And the last you saw, um, I had a few of these letters, I, like these letters here done. I had just started a few of the um, Algerian eyelets on the G right here. Um, I had some of the motifs up here done. Um, but not a lot. And after working on it for these past two weeks, oh well really, maybe a week and a half, this is where I'm at. Um, big change, this whole ship right here. The birds, this bird, these three birds right here were, are, were already done. Um, but the whole, the whole ship and the whole motif in the ship was done. Um, this motif was already done, um, these motifs here, and like I said, the birds were already done. I actually already had the outline of the sails. Um, those were done, but they weren't filled in yet. Um, but everything below, everything, uh, everything from the ship is done. Um, this ship has a bird problem. I, 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 yeah, I kind of had that realization. This ship has a bird problem. 
because not only does it have the three birds on the top here but there's a there's a bird on the mast I don't know what you would call that on the, the front of the ship and then we got a bird sitting on top of the flagpole on the back of the ship <sighs> too many birds um, and I did go ahead and finish out the G here um, with the double running stitch and then I started on the H there's a lot of Algerian eyelets in this particular pattern um, including the ship itself like let me adjust here see this row yeah there's that's the Algerian eyelets right there in that lighter brown color and I got kind of annoyed because I had done them all in that dark brown and then realized I was using the wrong color and if I had I had done from like here I had done all the way up to like right here just beyond midpoint um, I had done eight Algerian eyelets out of a total of one two three four five six seven eight thirteen in the ship so I had to frog all those out and frogging out Algerian eyelets is not a pleasant experience which I do not wish to repeat so ship is done um these are just I, I was using the gray or whatever that color that's that that's that light brown still um these are just their bands in the buckets of the lady that's there's a lady right here and she's got the yolk with the the buckets hanging down that's just the bands on the buckets a little bit of extra floss that I didn't want to just put it away um and this particular reminder I forgot to tell you I, I keep trying to forget um this fabric is a 16 count Ada from fabrics by LJ and it's called antique um and the needle minder is from um I just went blank it's not no name Nina Minders the everyday stitcher this is when she first started out and she was doing the, the large wooden discs um, but yeah the everyday stitcher that's where that's from so I literally just finished up like the water and the guy's pants this morning and so I am putting this away for now um, this coming week I will this week I will pick a different project to focus on and then the last project I can't go ahead and put these away the last project I have to show you is when you are probably wondering well what about pumpkin tree still working on pumpkin tree um, still trying to get it finished. Ideally, I did want I do want to finish it in January, but I'm being held up by one, two, three stitch right now. Um, sorry, a little bit of annoyance there. Um, I don't even need to show you. It's from the magazine, it's from the Halloween 2016 edition of Just Cross Stitch. Um, this is a. 14 count Ada that I dyed myself. This is my pumpkin tree. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, this is not attached to anything. And the reason it's not attached to anything is because it's waiting on those last three pumpkins to get done. And I can't do the last three pumpkins until one through three stitch sends me the skein of Weeks Dye Works pumpkin that I ordered two weeks ago um they keep upping the ship date because the piece of fabric that I ordered which was just a 25 count um easy magic guide fabric that they recently just started carrying um because the piece of fabric that I ordered um was going to ship at a later date and even then it's gone beyond that 
they've even upped the ship date on that piece of fabric. They up. It used to be, at first, it was the ship date was going to be yesterday, not yesterday, but um, Friday. And they kept changing the expected ship date of the fa of the floss to the next day, then the next day, and then when it got up to the twelfth, they changed the ship date for the fabric to the twenty eighth. So the fabric is not going to ship out at least until the twenty eighth. And because I'm assuming they're they're trying to wait and just ship them both together, which is fine. Like, I don't have to have the floss right now, but it's annoying because I really just want to go ahead and, and mark this thing done. Um, because I guess they're waiting to ship the, the pieces together. Um, they're waiting to ship that floss with the fabric when the fabric gets ready to ship. And so the floss keeps being um, pushed back by to the next day and then the next day and the next day. So, waiting on floss, and everything else is done. When I worked on this last week, um, at the local store, I I made sure I said I'm just gonna go ahead. I, I ran out. I knew I was gonna run out of the pumpkin, um, and it was annoying as hell. So, I told myself, well, let me just let me get everything else done, so that. When that floss comes in, all I need to do is going to be those three pumpkins left. And then it'll be done. So everything else is done. I finished up the red. Um, I finished up the red and the, the branch there. And I did all the greenery. And then I went back and I did the, um, the faces on the other pumpkins that I hadn't completed yet. And like I said, at this point... I'm literally just waiting for that orange floss to come in. So, and I know somebody out there is probably saying, well, you could just call them and tell them to go ahead and ship you the floss. Um, and then we'll just go ahead and ship you the partial order. That's okay. It's not that huge of a deal. Um, it's just, I really did want to finish this, but I'm not, it's, it's not such an emergency that I need to tell them just send me the one skein of floss that I ordered in addition to the fabric. So, it can wait. It's it's not a dire emergency. Um, just an annoyance that I'm waiting on that skein of floss to be able to finish this pattern. And, and in all realness, I probably could just go ahead and put the rest of this floss away when I'm done with it. But that's all the... the stuff that I worked on. I forgot to put the magazine back in here. But that's all the whips I worked on in the last couple of weeks. Um, those little envelopes are holding it really good, by the way. Um, what else did I get done? I also did a little bit of fabric dyeing. Um, I feel like I'm saying um a lot today. I did do a little, little bit of fabric dyeing because I still had, I, I wanted to do something instead of just spending a lot of money on more fabric. So I still had, um, I still had some of the, a, a fairly large piece of the MCG, it's a soft and easy fabric, 14 count. And I did do some dyeing. I, I, I figured out, okay, what projects do I need fabric for still? And what can be done on 14 count? And am I going to have, what type of size am I going to need on a 14 count? So, after a bunch of math, um, and figuring out, I came to the conclusion that I could cut the piece of fabric that I had into two pieces. Um, one piece would be the smaller piece, which was going to be for the Brooks Books Advent Animals. And the other piece was going to be a, a larger 30 by 30, basically, piece for the, um, the stars piece out of the Just Cross Stitch. So, I did a couple of techniques here. 
This first piece I'm going to show you was the piece for the Brooks books. And this is a piece that I did um, by the spray. Um, I think. Yeah, I did it by spray. I Big box, put the fabric in the box, and sprayed it. I'm showing you this side. I'm going to show you this side for a reason. This is what I came up with. It is, there's a lot of purple in this this amount of light is like blowing this color out. It's kind of, it's it's very lavendery with, with hints of light blue. You can kind of see it there. Um, beautiful fabric. I could definitely use this for book books. But there was an issue. And I don't even know how this happened. It happened overnight. I don't know if one of the cats jumped up onto it um, while it was drying. But... See that? I don't know what happened, and it ruined, it, it just kind of ruins it for me. Um, so I don't know what to do. I really don't know what to do. And this piece is the perfect size for the Brooks books. So either I start it to like this end, and start it up at a higher point, but the Brooks books is still gonna the ad the Advent animals themselves are still gonna come down to about here, even if I start it up a little bit higher, it's gonna come down. It it's gonna be in the design no matter what I do. So I'm thinking I may I don't know what to do about it. And what I'm thinking is I may end up having to spray over it again and try and try again I don't know yet though something I'm gonna have to play with the other piece of fabric um, I have had an ordeal with and you're sitting on it right now Hold on. Um, the second piece I've been trying to get it to be navy blue with no success the stars pattern it calls for a 14 count navy blue Ada, which is fine. It's, it's the perfect fabric for it. I mean, it's basically um, light colored and sparkly black work. Um, and it just wasn't working. I took navy blue and I dipped it in the, I dipped this in it twice, twice. And at the very least, it was only coming out as like a medium purple color. So I'm like, why isn't this navy blue, why isn't this dye taking to the fabric? So I looked it up. Um, I googled what this MCG um, 14 count Ada is. Um, the soft and easy stuff. And it turns out it's 100% polyester. It's, it's a non-natural fiber. And I'm like... That probably explains why it's not taking the dye. Um, so I made a plan. So I'm going I'm to find. I'm going to go and get um, some of the navy blue. RIT does have dye that's for um, synthetic fibers. Um, it's just the RIT dye more line. And usually they have the colors right there with the regular bottled RIT dye. Um, but I went and looked. And I didn't see a navy blue. And I've looked online and apparently they don't even make navy blue in this particular line. But I did dye it with this, um, it's, it's a blue, it's the darkest blue they had. Uh, it's the darkest blue they have available. It's called sapphire blue. And it's a very pretty blue. It's about, you know, about like that. Um, kind of, yeah. A little bit lighter than my shirt um but it's called sapphire blue and this is the color that it's supposed to be this is the color of the bottle um or roundabout thereof so and i did do it um according to the package directions on the bottle which was the stove top method um it's just to basically take boiling water or near boiling water um at the dye at the fabric and let that steep we'll let that simmer for about 30 minutes i left this in 
the near boiling water. I left it in there for about 45 minutes on the stove. Um, and this was as dark as it was going to get. So, I still needed a little bit darker. Still needed a little bit darker. And I'm, I've been going back and forth on what to do about it. Um, I have kind of messaged writ or commented on something on their site um, as to what I can do about it. If there's, like, if there's another color that I can mix it in, mix in this blue with, like, possibly mix it in, mixing it in with either the black or the graphite they have in that dye more, or even the purple. Um, I, I'm kind of looking for ideas on how I can get that to be darker. Because I don't want to buy, because otherwise I'm going to have to buy a whole half yard. Uh, is it half a yard or a yard? Because the piece of fabric, um, it does call for a 14 count, Ada. Um, but the piece of fabric needs to be at least about 30 by 30 or 31 by 31. Uh, so, and that's what size this is. So... I really don't want to have to pay another $15 for a large piece of Ada, navy blue Ada, when I can, I don't know. It's hard to find navy Ada, especially in a larger size. Yeah, I know you could buy a smaller size, but it's hard to find Ada in a, in a larger size. Um, but if I can just figure out a way to get this to be navy blue, this will be perfect. This would be usable. Otherwise, I'm at a loss for words. I don't know what to do. So, that's my fabric dyeing stories for this week. Um, I did get in a couple things in the mail that came in prior to last weekend. So, I did get in. I. I finally did manage to get in the kit that I was waiting on from Listia. Um, it's, no, it's not in the original packaging, but it looks like everything is still here. Um, so it's, just, it's a Candemar Designs um, sampler, mitten, mitten sampler, um, like an ornament, and everything is still in here. Um, everything's still in here the Ada, the floss there's even some beads like all these right here you see these gold dots those are the beads so everything's still in there accounted for got the red felt for the backing so um yep that finally came in um, and the other thing is, I bought, everybody always talks about, um, Facebook Marketplace these days. And I actually have, believe it or not, you can, you can save a search in Facebook Marketplace for cross-stitch. Or whatever terms you want to put in there. And I was looking, and I came across a lady, well, a post from, like, a week before, like, a week prior um, for this kit and I messaged her is it still available which she said yeah so long story short the lady brought it out to me at work um, the next day and it is a Teresa Wensler um, English garden sampler full kit full kit never opened still fully intact and I bought this at about half the cost, um, literally, that you would find these on eBay for. So, I'm happy. Another, another TW. So, that's pretty much going to be it for me as far as the show and tell portion of the video. Um, I do, I do finally want to go ahead and do my new watches. And I'm going to do these um, in order of from the last time I did, from my, last time I actually did them. 
Um, and we're going to start out with Stitch and Misfits. The thing I have to say about Stitch and Misfits, she, what she originally started out was just her, it was just the one lady. And it was under her, like her real name, or her real name, nickname type of thing. Um, and, but she has started being joined by a friend of hers. And the, the, the original lady's name is Hanan. Um, well, that's what she's called. Her name is Hanan. She is Muslim, and she does wear the hijab. And what's a, what was so surprising to me, <laughs> and it still it still boggles me sometimes, the way she talks, and it's not in the way he's like you think somebody that's Muslim would talk very very cleanly and you know not. Um, I don't know, it's just, like, I, I guess I expected something different. But she is a wild and crazy lady, you guys. And her, um, her friend that she's joined by, I'm sorry, I don't remember her name. Um, she's, she's just as wild and crazy. Their <laughs> New Year's Eve thing, their New Year's Eve video was a laugh riot, you guys. If you're not watching Stitch and Misfits, Go watch, subscribe to them, get the notifications, everything. You need to watch, you need to be watching them. Um, and then I finally subscribed to Is Kismet. Um, a lot of people already know about her. She's been doing videos for a while. Um, Needlebug. And I don't, don't right off remember much about her right now. Maybe I need to go back and rewatch some of her stuff. Sorry. Um, soldier stitching. Uh, stitch all the things. All in all caps. Stitch all the things. She is... I'm trying to think. She was on Facebook for a long time. And I, and I always recognized her name. And then she decided she was going to start doing cloth soup. She's... She's not always... innocent um she does curse some um that's okay she has this kind of what you would call like attitude and what was what was it that i said um it's just it's i i have this thing like i love the floss tubers to have this kind of um, snarky that's the word I use snarky like I I love this I love I have a thing about the floss tubers that have this kind of snarky attitude um this kind of snarky way about talking and presenting their stuff um Jessie Marie is a little bit snarky but she is a lot snarky um, and then the next person is also the same way. They're actually friends. Um, and her YouTube, and she's actually the same name on Instagram. Um, it's X underscore Amy Tavil, Amy Tavil underscore X. So you'll probably recognize her from Instagram. Um, I was following her on Instagram before she started doing the videos. Um, so I immediately recognize the name, and she's, she's another one I, I'm recently starting to like more. Um, and then we have Kim Stitches in Texas, um, Girls and Needle, Stitching in Sequins, and then the last one is one that's blown up, apparently, um, just from Jessie Marie and, um, Bendy Stitchy. Bendy Stitchy Michelle Garrett. Sorry. Um. Yeah, I, I lose bits of my memory every once in a while. Um, but yeah, Jessie Marie has shouted her out. Michelle Garrett has shouted her out. Um, it's the cutest little 
cutest mother daughter duo. Um, and Jesse Marie's a little bit not happy that she's a Texas um, Volunteers fan. But she lives, they're currently in Hawaii right now. Um, her, hus her husband is in the military. And that's where they're currently stationed. But she said they are going to be moving on here probably within the next three months, I think. He's coming to the end of his of his deployment wherever he's wherever he's at. Not deployment, but you know. His assignment. He's he's coming to the end of where his assignment. Um and the the little girl um sorry, I'm I'm also terrible with names. Unless I s unless I hear the name like a hundred times, I'm I'm gonna hop have a hard time remembering it. Um but the little girl is absolutely adorable. She's eight years old, and she's just starting stitching herself. And um, she recently, up until recently, hated um, reading her book assignment that she was supposed to be reading for school and everything. She hated reading. And then they binge watch Jessie Marie and now she loves reading. She's into the Harry Potter series. And so that that's awesome. And that's going to be it for all my new watches. I told you it was going to be a long one. Um didn't take too long. Of course, I didn't really go into a lot of detail about every single person on this list. But that's pretty much going to be it for like all the official stuff. Um, a couple of, a couple of, like, news type things. Um, Stitch related, I did go ahead and cancel Stitchy Box. Um, not because I wasn't willing to give them another chance to, to keep getting it, but because I'm trying to, I need to cut expenses. And, especially for something that I'm going to be mentioning here soon. Um, something I'm going to be mentioning it here in a minute. Um, but I, I'm trying to cut expenses and like I mentioned in my last video, I didn't really get the value of Stitchy Box. Like I'm not able to use everything that they send. Um, I'm, I'm missing out on a lot of stuff um, a lot of purpose in the things that they send. So it's just the value wasn't there for me. I mean it's like $40 um, every other month and I know that doesn't it's not a whole ton of a lot but um, it just it just wasn't feasible for me to keep going with it and the next thing is going to be that uh, I am going to be moving soon I am going to be not like this week but I did go this past week and I got a an apartment. I put the application in, put the money down on an apartment. Um, unfortunately, it's um, it's not even going to be clear of people until the end of February, and it's going to be mid March before I'm going to be able to get into it. But, and you may be asking yourself, well, why this particular apartment? Why do you need this particular apartment? Well, it's a one bedroom. And this is a college town, and one-bedroom apartments are hard to come by. Particularly because when I first... Okay, let me back up. Okay, guys, sorry. I gotta interject because my original take on this was very long and all over the place. What's going on with the things in my life right now. A couple weeks ago, the guy that runs the local store here that I go to one, one day a week, um, he submitted his two-week notice that as after basically tomorrow, um, he's going to be leaving the company. And the, the guys that run the company, they called my store on my day off and spoke to the guy that usually takes my place on my days off on my days when I'm gone 
and asked him if he wanted to take the position to take over the store. And after some deliberation for a couple of day, for a day or two, he decided to go ahead and take the position. So, leading up to this, the day that the company, the day that all this came out, um, obviously was the day that I had off, and I had gone that morning before no, before finding all this out. I had gone that morning to. A new apartment complex and was asking about a one-bedroom apartment and unfortunately I said they didn't have any with the study which is a walled in just the apartment continued out um, with a very tiny bit of a walkout um, they didn't have one with the study they only had a one-bedroom with a balcony um, which is not what I wanted because I knew I was going to need the extra room for my craft stuff. And so I find I, I go up, I, I leave kind of dejected because it's not really what I wanted. Um, and I leave, find all this out, and then a couple days later I start thinking, well, if he's going to be leaving, then maybe I can just move into the existing two bedroom that they're, all, that they're in right now that I used to live in. Um, just move in. And they wouldn't have to worry about taking all their stuff out. And if they needed to leave something there, they could do that. And I would get a two-bedroom. And it's an apartment that I'm already familiar with. And so, I, I kept trying to get in touch with Anil and ask him this. And unfortunately, it was several days later before I, before I finally learned that, unfortunately, the renewal notice had come up back in November. And they had made the decision I guess back then to go ahead and for this for his brother who's running the store to go ahead and leave and go to Alabama with him so the lease was coming up um, ending uh, which I assume is probably going to be at the end of this month and so lease wasn't renewed and so he had gone to the apartment place, uh, the, the apartment office, and was asking them about the leases and the apartments and whatnot, and brought me an application later on. And so I went back and forth for a few days. He said, you know, you can move into this apartment, you know, after they've already cleaned it up, but it's going to be middle of February before you can get into it. So. They were saying the one bedroom that they had available was coming, going to be coming up um, early March, I think. Something like that. I don't remember. But that was my options. So I thought it over for a few days. And I was, truth be told, I was kind of procrast both procrastinating and kind of getting a little held up from taking it back because it's not exactly on my way anywhere. Um, it wasn't like it was on my way to work in the mornings. And I'm horrible at trying to leave any earlier than I normally do. And so, I got held up and I took the, I finally got around to taking the application back about a week later. After I decided, okay, I'm just going to go ahead, I'm going to take that one bedroom with balcony that, that they have available. Um, because it's cheaper. And I already know at this point that I'm not going to be at my job any longer. I'm not going to be at my job much longer because I'm going to be stepping down later this year. And so the two bedroom that he's leaving is about $100 more than the, a little over $100 more than the, than the one bedroom I was looking at, that I was thinking I was going to apply for. So I get there and uh, I, I asked the lady, I was like, I wanted to apply for the one bedroom. She's like, oh, is that the one bedroom with balcony? With balcony? And I said, yeah, unless you know of any other, unless you happen to know of any other one bedrooms that you might be having coming available. So she looked in her system and she came back and said, actually, we just learned yesterday about a, a one bedroom with study that's going to be coming open um, at the end of February, at the end of February. So I'm like, awesome. That's the one I want to apply for is the one with study because it's extra room. And it's just another like $15 a month from the one with the balcony. So 
it's kind of a good thing that I procrastinated on taking that application back. So probably mid-March I'll be moving. That's when I'm able, finally able to take possession of the new apartment. So unfortunately I, am, I do have to wait a little bit longer. I might wait another couple of months before I can move, but at least I have a goal that I'm going to be moving then. Um, and probably not long after that I'm going to be stepping down or stepping away from the company as well um, because I have planned and I've already talked with the girl that works with me she already has a second job um, where she cleans up office buildings and stuff in the evenings and I've talked with her and I'm probably going to be getting on with the same company as soon as I'm able to leave this company so uh, I am needing to cut expenses and that was one of the reasons why I did away with Stitchy Box so, I'm sorry that I had to come in and do this little interjection, but my original explanation was a little bit all over the place, and I felt like I needed to go back and redo it in a little bit more concise way. So, on with the rest of the video. A lot going on. I know, right? Um, I keep looking over. He is so peacefully. You know how animals, they look, animals and kids, they always look so sweet and innocent when they're sleeping. And I want to sh show you this. It's just completely adorable. He has paw covering his nose a minute a second ago. Because he heard me talking about him. So, that's going to be it for me today. Sorry, the crooked. That's going to be it for me today. Um, sorry for the long wait. Um, I promise not to make you guys wait too much longer next from now on. Um, well, I can't promise that. It just depends on what's going on. Like, come March, I may have to take a, a week or two off um, for moving and whatnot. So... Uh, yeah, as far as I can think of, I should have my first month of Pictures Plus fabric coming, um, early this coming week, uh, so you'll probably see that next time, and Um, uh, shoot. I did sign up, well, I didn't officially sign up, but, um, I am going to be taking part in a couple of styles. One in general, one specifically probably, but I'm not making 100% plans on anything at this point. Um, one of them has already started come out and if I'm going to do it then I need to go ahead and do it and start on it um, because there's going to be a new part to come out every month and the January part has already come out and that is um, from who is it give me a second the Four Seasons um, Sal Okay, the Modern Folk Embroidery Mystery Cell, uh, and the name of it is Four Seasons. So, Modern Folk Embroidery, I don't know if you have to pay for every part, but when I went to buy it, it only cost $2.11 American. It was like $1.99 pounds or something like that. Um, but I'm not sure if that's for every part, or if that's for the whole thing. I guess we'll find out. Or maybe somebody can tell me in the comments. Um, and the next one that I may be signing up for, I don't, I'm not 100% certain on it yet. Um, Michelle at, um, Hayde. Right? 
yeah, Michelle Sayeta at Hade, um, she announced this past week the officially she announced the upcoming um, Hade Mystery Sale, and it won't be starting again until April the first. So right now they're just getting all the information out. Um, they're getting the floss list out, and she's put up a preview, kind of a sneak peek um, of the sale. And it's really pretty. And I'm thinking it's it's going to be like a band sampler, I think. Similar to a band sampler. So, I may consider starting that. And that means that I'm going to have to replace two of my chosen whips. Because I decided that my 40th whip was going to be the... It was going to have to be the um, mini Simply Meant to Be by Hayden that I've been procrastinating on starting for my son. So that's going to have to be my 40th whip for the, week, for the year. And what I'm thinking about doing is starting it in, in February, making it my February start, um, which is what I ordered the fabric for from 123 Stitch. Um, and then adjusting accordingly like my February start moving it to a different month I don't know it's it either that or just starting the two in February or going starting that third one this month if and when my fabric comes in I don't know yet so as with every time that I make plans for an entire year something's gonna change I don't know yet what that's going to be or how it's going to change, but something's going to change. So just be aware of that. Um, but that is definitely it for now. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I had I had to say. No, nope, that's pretty much going to be it. I can't wait to get my first piece of picture this plus fabric, y'all. Um, and that was the um, the subscription through Needle Craft Corner. So, fortunately, if you're wondering about that, it's too late to get on in on that now. Um, it was like a it was Baker's Dozen um, subscription that it's um, they ended signups back in the end of November, I believe, and then starting this month you got a piece of fabric every month and if you stayed subscribed for the whole year in December you get a, an extra free piece so 13 pieces Baker's dozen um, but it's put on through Needlecraft Corner so if you didn't get into it this year just squirrel, squirrel that information away in your mind and They'll probably, if, if they decide to do it again, they'll open up signups again for it late late in the year uh, for 2019. Um, but Needlecraft Corner also does have, in June, they'll be having their 25% off all pictures plus fabrics for the entire month of June, just like they did this past year. Um, and I learned about that through Stephanie Kine, Miss Oh So Crafty. So it was a good thing I learned about that because we also learned late last year that 2017 was going to be the last year for a picture of this pluses um, Christmas in July sale, which was that one day sale they have every year in July, and they're they're doing away with that. So come June, I don't know. I'm I'm still doing stitch from stash. I'll have to see how my budget looks then. Um. But yeah, I'm just going off on rabbit shells at this point, you guys. I'm sorry. Um, but that's going to be it for me, you guys. Um, that's going to be it for me today. Um, I hope everybody has a great week. Get lots of stitching in. I know I'm about to go ahead and start something early. I'm probably going to go ahead and put those two stitches in. My uh, January 18th start. 
I'm going ahead and starting it now so that because the 18th is technically on a Thursday and I'm going to have to work that day, I don't like um, doing my new starts um, on a day when I'm at work. Um, if I can avoid it. Um, probably going to avoid and start that. I have today off. I have tomorrow off. So I'm probably going to keep working on it. I feel like it's going to be a fun stitch. I went ahead and got everything prepared this past week. I found my starting point, which was actually the center of the very top. Um, found my starting point. And I put, I started the thread, like I put the half stitch in um, that starting point. And it's ready to go. It's, all, it's already on the Q-snap. So, I'm probably going to be working on that all the rest of the day. And tomorrow. Because I'm not going anywhere. So, until I see you guys next time, um, again, have a great week. Get lots of stitching done. Have a blessed week. And I will see you guys soon. Bye.